A recent video credited Unreal's Megalites for an 8x on average performance increase over traditional rendering. I quickly had my studio comment from our channel to warn viewers that if the traditional rendering side was properly optimized, you could get 3 times better performance than the Megalite scenario with very little visual loss. The complacent population of the Unreal developer community challenged my statement, and with the test scene creator support, I will show you how I delivered on the promised performance using no baking or upscaling. Then I'll show you where the true bottlenecks are present in Unreal to show you where even more reasonable and substantial performance can be obtained to elevate consumer experience. I'm also going to expose the abusive mindsets a large population of the developer community has taken with consumers. I will also explain why this channel is being attacked but only in the form of baseless rhetoric. Before I get started, I need you to hit that subscribe button because we are officially under confirmed censorship in the Unreal Engine subreddit, whose users are in desperate need of this channel's content. So let's go over how I optimize this project. Now one user made a ridiculous request that I should show off 4K at 150fps because the original video showed off 4K 50fps. Well I can do 4K, but the user in the video obviously had very high end hardware to reach anywhere near 50fps. On our test hardware, which is similar enough to the target hardware we defined in our last video, at 4K only gets 13fps. This is on the high preset, which is Epic Games' suggested 60fps engine settings combined with the project's default configuration. Now I experienced crashes with mega lights on, and I felt like the performance was this bad already, I didn't even want to record the performance without mega lights like the original video because it probably would have crashed my entire computer system. So I decided to fix performance in other areas first. I changed out the anti-aliasing which freed up about 7 milliseconds to only around 0.40 to 0.60 milliseconds. The resolution in combination with some TAA tweaks ended up giving less blurry results in motion. Then I removed the outside contents due to poor nanite management and wanted to focus on the scene that was shown in the original video. But the outside content has over 100 shadow casting lights with enormous range parameters. Keeping these as small as possible helps the traditional pipeline properly disable or cull lights when they or their shadow maps are not visible within the camera's view. Almost all of the lights in the project had blown up values. Which means when the traditional pipeline was turned back on, over 300 shadow maps were being drawn. Not to mention how fast overlapping lights, shadow casting or not, kill performance. So before turning off mega lights, I fixed the range on all of the lights, but I wasn't ready to flip the switch off yet. I then scanned the environment for low poly meshes that I could immediately turn Nanite off with. I started with a floor, which ended up being multiple pieces. The reason why this is ridiculous is because this could literally be a flat ground utilizing max area topology, and this pattern could just be a repeated texture instead. But if you take an even closer look, you'll find even more anti-performance topology. We're talking example case bad. The problem with Unreal's LODs in terms of quality and efficiency is that it's based on UE's mesh reduction system, which is triangle context limited. As you can see, removing only 14 triangles on this mesh drastically changes it due to ignoring UV context and general topology inefficiencies. I was able to reduce the amount of meshes using Nanite significantly, lowering Nanite's frame surface area cost. For some, I reduced the triangle quad overdraw via manual LODs. But these meshes, which contain millions of triangles, forced me to leave Nanite on. The polycount reduction workflow forces me to guess a target polycount value that can only hopefully reduce overdraw without introducing major geometric errors. When it comes to extremely dense meshes in Unreal, for every guess the user makes, they have to wait several minutes locked from interacting with anything else in the engine until the reduction calculation is complete. This is why Threat Interactive wants to invest in an AI-based mesh reduction tool or at least a development tool that shows the mesh in a normally lit mode, synchronized side by side with a quad overdraw view mode, for a workflow that goes something like this. Imagine dragging your mouse vertically to push or pull the mesh from the camera's view, and dragging your mouse horizontally to dynamically reduce the poly count on a surface variance overdraw and UV aware basis. When a balance is found, the user should just tap a key to save the distance and density LED preset. But such a logical workflow hasn't been developed for the engine, and time is limited for myself and the thousands of companies using this engine, so users are forced to rely on Nanite's cluster streaming. I then removed the unoptimized Ultra Dynamic Sky Actor and replaced it with the editor's default skylighting system. After disabling shadows on several lights that didn't need them, I finally turned off mega lights. I switched over to cascaded shadow maps over VSM to utilize signed distance field shadows. Then I slowed the tracing rate in Lumen, Increase the balance light intensity and lower the lumen reflection threshold since the tweak didn't subtract from the environment's appearance. 
Here's a basic view of the original performance in visuals. And here's the promised performance via somewhat proper optimization. Now remember, all the lights are completely dynamic, which leaves room on the table for visual and performance enhancements. Now I want you to subscribe, if you believe as I do, that any missing detail included in the original project will not significantly enhance your immersion if well-designed gameplay is provided even in a realistic-based aesthetic. Both examples are proudly presented in editor. Abusive developers have often tried to invalidate the statistical data we've shown on this channel by using this argument. Packaged performance being better is a basic expectation that is responsible for basic GPU performance improvements. The destructive performance data we've shown is more easily accessible in editor, and packaging your project is not going to magically fix the foundational problems you can detect early in development. And don't even think about sending those videos on YouTube showing the massive performance improvements between the states, since those videos don't address the fact that Unreal changes its internal resolution while an editor versus play state and commonly defaults to upscaling via TAA. The reliance on Nanite is still costing me 2 milliseconds, but the bigger bottleneck is from Lumen. Due to Unreal's console bias management, when Unreal is rendering at native 4K, their engine wastes performance shading other effects at a resolution higher than what's needed for a stable, independent upscale to your native resolution like we saw with Fox Engine's diffuse lighting. I share my name and face for Threat Interactive's initiative because I firmly believe in the performance and quality potential the use case games we defined in our last video can deliver. In fact, I think the graphics mode in Fortnite, which is the opposite of our use case, has far worse performance than it should. Anyone who watches our videos with the intent of truly listening and watching under the proper recommended compression can clearly see the issues we focus on are legitimate. They are real problems despite the rhetorical slander you'll find about us. And unlike other YouTubers who make up problems that don't exist, we are defining genuine problems that every person who cares can clearly see. We have gained such massive support in a small amount of time because we are waking up consumers to issues they didn't even know how to voice or even express concern over. But deep down inside, they've known all along that something was very wrong. Our videos allow consumers to mass criticize the insane abuse of modern hardware performance and the poor visuals modern games have delivered from a pro-realism stance. When a channel like this one gives consumers so much power, developers who are involved with these abusive game productions are not going to be happy when accurate and informed customer complaints plow through their marketing or game communities. Which is why developers will act quickly on slandering our competence, even though many have completely misinterpreted what we've stated in our videos. They will call us grifters because we want to crowdfund for a very well-defined market efficiency for a proven solution. We actually didn't even have a donation portal until viewers requested that we make one after our first video. And we state on our website that we want to show viewers more about us, such as a game, and more solution-based information you can find in the videos we produce. Developer communities will mock us with admin support, who admit they don't even watch our content. So I ask you, who do these people think they are to invalidate our visually based proof and math slides when several of our attackers admit to not even viewing our content? Then there's a specific group of developers who hate us the most. And it's not game designers, you know, the ones that make gameplay. And it's not game animators or technical artists either. It's the graphics programming portion of developers that really hate this channel. And unfortunately, it's the same people that the future of graphics is at the mercy of. You see, graphics programmers are the ones that implement effects like Bloom, Shadow Techniques, Global Illumination, things like Nanite and Anti-Aliasing. They're the ones responsible for the performance optimizations and visual quality we consumers and non-graphic devs get in our games. And we are the only ones who do not tell but show consumers their five years plus in development graphics pipeline performing and appearing worse than past implementations. We are the ones who refuse to coddle their unneeded smeary and or noisy graphic designs. Let me show you an example. This graphics programmer for about a year now has been working on a nanite adjacent mesh rendering method in Unity. When asked about our channel, he gave an extremely superficial response, but as usual with these people, I was able to confirm he is of course not even watching our content. He concluded his decision about us by plugging in YouTube's unreliable transcripts of our videos into ChatGPT which just iterated on core elements he suggested and doesn't even understand the issues with. I'm actually banned from the biggest graphics programming discord, which you can imagine is not helpful for the development of these videos, for defending consumers who were under constant derogatory mocking, for disliking the smeary garbage the graphic programmers present there defend and promote the abuse of. 
Now, not all graphic programmers are the problem. We have many who follow our X account, support our Discord, and we have some of the most prolific industry names supporting our topics and calling for the recognitions of the issues we're talking about. Names like Sebastian Altonen, Marty Mods, and Timothy Lott, who I've had amazing conversations with. He is such a polite person to speak with and shows sincere interest in solving these problems, unlike so many graphic programmers and developers who attack us with meaningless lies. That's why I'm calling for a cultural shift in graphic developer communities, to start focusing on the issues without the ignorant influence of so-called veteran devs who have zero concerns with the issues the gaming industry is confirming they care about. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so to empower that industry confirmation. We have shown hundreds and thousands of people the truth about graphics and optimization to the point of no return. The people who support Threat Interactive will forever know the truth about graphics now, because what we've shown cannot be unseen or argued over in any legitimate shape or form. No one could possibly make a damage control video reversing these people's opinions. Where are the videos from the authorities showing Unreal's various pipeline portions aren't dependent on flawed TA? They don't exist because the undeniable truth has already been shown by us and no one else. The only thing these abusive developers can do is simply deceive consumers, like they did about optimization or make media that is about totally irrelevant details. Such as my mic quality, or trying to use my young appearance in an attempt to invalidate this discussion. Or because Threat Interactive hasn't shown the game we've been working on because I won't allow my art to be slaughtered by the noisy slime of modern graphic pipelines, unlike other complacent studios who have forever tainted their games. I've said controversial statements, such as deprecating cube maps for ray trace reflections. I've stated poor image quality on major systems such as the Series S should be more than expected. I've stated developers should stop wasting time integrating their innovations into dead engines, or dead engines in terms of our target use case we defined, yet we're gaining popularity exponentially with each video because we explain the logic behind our decisions. This is not a conspiracy channel. The problems we're talking about happen due to a capitalist market, and we have a capitalist solution. I care about my game as a developer and the quality of my experience with other games as a player. Because my game follows a popular environment format, that provides the capitalist solution and proper motivation. People should not dilute our intentions, but instead embrace our financial incentive. This is a special thank you to the hundreds of developers who support our movement and to our current and future subscribers. Share our videos on multiple Discord servers, regardless of the ignorant attacks you might face. Also, share this video on major subreddits as that massively boosts our notoriety. Until then, thank you for watching this one.